one through 81. Pass me not.
every day, not just this day, but every day. God is good all the time. This morning, our scripture is coming from Psalms number 37, beginning at the first verse. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thy in this against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herd. Trust in the Lord, do good, so shall thy dwell in the land, and verily thy shall be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth the righteousness as the light, and thy judgments as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his ways, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. I read Psalms number 37, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord bless the readers and the hearers and the doers, especially of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. The one that really cares. Yes, 
and when we lost us, we nobody can or ever will. We thank you for all things. It ain't about us. It's all about you, dear Father God. If we didn't have you, what would we be? Thank you, Lord, for your healing, your deliverance, your restoration power, Lord. For you are awesome in all your life ways and all that works, Lord. We thank you for being so good and kind to us, Lord. Lord, help us to just dispense love one for another, Father God. I pray for peace and goodwill toward all of men, Father God. We have so many things to be thankful for, but we just couldn't thank you enough, Lord. We're just so grateful to just have you in our lives. Life is not worth living without you, oh Lord Christ. Well, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We pray for the bereaved family, dear Father God. We pray for the ones that have procedures, Lord, that's uh, healing from the procedures, Lord God. Oh Lord, I pray for my daughter Nicole, Father God, because uh, they said that the cancer spread to his stomach, Father God. So I just ask that you, I know that you be a healer, Father God. Anyone out here that has cancer or has been a recipient of cancer, Lord, I pray for them, Father God, that you continue, Lord, to work in them and through them, Father God. I know you to be the great I am. I know that you're able to do what no one else can do, Lord. We pray for the ones that are in the nursing homes, the ones that are behind the prison wall. We pray for our children as they go to school, Father God. We ask that you take care of them and keep them safe, Father God. They, they, other people, mean, evil people, that do so many terrible things to the children, Lord. We just ask you to be with them, Lord, as they go to school when they return home, Lord. We let them be safe, dear Master God. It ain't about us, it's all about you, dear Master God. Lord, teach us and guide us and lead us, oh Lord. I pray for peace and goodwill to our men, Lord. Lord, just help us to be so, so ready to just do your will, your way, for your purpose, Lord. Oh, Lord, let's edify and magnify your holy name. We think about what you are already done, Father God. We couldn't stop thanking you, Lord. We couldn't stop worshiping and praising you, Lord. We worship you so hard and so much and so sincerely, Lord, Father God, that we're breaking to a praise, Father God. We got so many reasons, Lord, to worship and adore you. Oh, Lord, to work and serve, Father God. Oh, Lord, help us to be kind to one another, Lord. Help us display the fruit of the Spirit, dear Father God, each and every day, Father God. Oh, Lord, help us to go in faith, Father God. Oh, teach us thy will, thy way, Lord God. Help us to teach your words, tell your words to ourselves, Father God. Oh, Lord, help us to pray without seeking, Father God. Oh, Lord, you've been so good, Lord God. Oh, you're alive, Jesus. You are alive today and every day. You say yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, Father God, I pray for the child family, Lord, and the near family, Father God. Oh, I pray for uh, Reverend Shantley, Father God. I just pray that uh, you cover him from the top of his head to the soul of his feet, Father God. Oh, Lord, I pray for Pastor Benetti, Father God, that you touch him from the top of his head to the soul of his feet, Father God. You know what they stand in need of, Father God. Then I ask you to. Uh, I pray for my pastor, Father God. You touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. It ain't about us. It's all about you, Lord. Give him what he needs, you know, Lord, because he has a hard job. It ain't easy. Oh, Lord God, when I come praying, Father God, for Pastor again, Father God, you touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. You give him what you need. Him. In Jesus' name, I pray. I say, thank God and amen.
you said the thankful and grateful to our officers for our devotional period. We are thankful and grateful that we have those with us who can help us be a witness for the Lord. in cold Minnesota. That's good. We realize that sometimes in uh, our lives, our journeys take us to places that we didn't even know we were going to have to go. Sister Hardy, sister of our own Deacon Earl Robinson. And they will be holding her funeral services. Uh, the viewing is at 9 a.m. and the services will start at 10. So uh, if you can and will, please, ma'am, please, uh, those that want to attend. Now, I have to tell you something, because this is, she's, I believe she's being buried in the Veterans Cemetery, so that means they're on a tight timetable. So when they say 10 o'clock, they mean 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And when it's time to go, whether they're done or not, they, they're going to leave and get out there to the cemetery. Because if you miss your time, it may take you two weeks to get another time slot. Yeah. So you can't be late. You better be out there 15, 20 minutes early yeah. sitting on the side of the house. For those of you that want to go, um, and uh, pay your respect, just keep that in mind and send your devotion. And there's another item in there, uh, which uh, that's something we do every year, so don't worry about that. Uh, I know y'all gonna do your best, and whatever you do will be most appreciated. Uh, this morning, a little bit short-handed, uh, Pastor Oates, in Chicago this morning. Uh, he down there uh, saying a word for the Lord. And uh, we hope him the best and uh, I want him to know that we do miss him. However, we will carry on. We will do our best. Uh, let me uh, remind you of something that 
since we just went through this Thanksgiving season, it may not have dawned on you, but we have so much to be thankful for. Yes, we do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may not have what you want. But I guarantee you got everything you need. Uh -huh. Now, if you don't think you got everything you need, uh, you just need to talk to some folk. I talked the other day with the lady that lived next door to me. She says to me, she says, you know, I had that automobile accident. I said, yeah, I remember that. Because I had to call 911 for her. She said, when I had that accident, I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. And I kind of looked at her, I said, that's not good. She said, I, I realize that now because I went through the windshield. <laughs> Broke, broke her back in a couple of places. Then she found out after that that someone had actually tampered with her car so that she would have an accident. She survived. And, uh, and walking around and all she can say, you, you were so nice to me. And all that, I'm looking at that. All I did was call the paramedics. I didn't really do anything. But as far as she was concerned, that was a very nice thing. So always do good for folks. You, 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 it may look like you're not doing anything, or you may not consider what you're doing very much, but at that particular moment in time, it was a whole lot to her. So be kind one to the other. The reason why we have a lot to be thankful for, I don't know about you, but I know I wouldn't be here without him. Amen. Amen. hear the late Willie McAfee saying, without God, I can do nothing. Without God, I would fail. I think I'm going to do a little bit of this, and then I'm going to get on into the morning message. I Chapter 5, and 
You ought to know this verse. Verse 18. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Verse 18. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning the right. So let's just talk about things to be thankful for. Now, things to be thankful for. We're glad to see uh, those of you that are here with us in the sanctuary, those of you that are with us on Facebook Live and those that are on our conference line. Remember, you have much to be thankful for. Amen. Our joy, prayers, and thoughtfulness should not fluctuate with our circumstances or our feelings. Uh -huh. Obeying these three commandments, be joyful, never stop praying, and be thankful often goes against our nature and our inclinations. When we make a conscious decision to do what God says, we will begin to see people in a new perspective. Yeah, yeah. When we do the will of God, we find it easier to be joyful and thankful. Let me pause for just a moment and say this. Most of us want to talk about being happy. Don't worry about being happy. Well, Be concerned about being joyful. Mm -hmm. Happiness comes from the outside. Yeah, yeah. Joy comes from the inside. This verse says that it's God's will for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ to be thankful. There are some things that happen in our lives that we are truly thankful for. We are thankful for birthdays and weddings and for love and family, but some things that happen are really difficult. We might have an illness the death of a loved one, a divorce, or some other sad event. But I don't care what it is, we still have reason to be thankful. Yes, thank you, Lord. Let's look closely at, our, at this verse. Some might think that this verse said, be thankful for all things and all circumstances. But the verse does not say be thankful for them. It says, be thankful in them. Come on, preacher. Come on. I can be thankful no matter what I'm going through. Uh -huh. I might not be thankful for the actual event, well. but I can be thankful that God has given me the strength to go through it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The original Hebrew word for in that is used here means in the middle of or during. I'm in the middle of a crisis, but I'm still thankful. Mm -hmm. I'm going through something that I don't really want to endure, but I'm still thankful. Yes, yes. In other words, no matter what's happening in your life, mm -hmm. you can be thankful. Amen. The Bible gives us a long list of things we should be thankful for. And I'm just going to go through a few of them. A few of these things that never change, no matter what happens in your life. Well, we need to be thankful. Uh -huh. We've had several tragedies that have happened over the past week or so. Yes. Several major or mass shootings have taken place. Loved ones have gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. And yet, we have reason yes. to be thankful. Yes, we do. Thank yes. you, Lord. It could have been me. Yes. The songwriter says, thank you, Lord, because it could have been me. Yes. I'll know. No food. No clothes. Yes. 
It could have been me. I can witness that. At one point in my life, I was on the verge, on the edge. I was staring homelessness in the face. Yes, sir. Come on, preach. Praying the whole time, Lord, you're going to fix this. Uh huh. Lord, I know you're going to do it for me. Yes, sir. Things were getting real close. Yeah. I had come up with a plan B. Where I was going to stay during this period of time and where I was going to stay during that period of time and how I was going to do this and how I was going to do that. And when hope was about to run out. Yeah, come on, preach. Talk about it. Phone call came. Yeah. All right. So, well, I got good news. And I'm thinking to myself, good news. And the only good news I need right now is I got the place I was trying to get to. And I didn't think I was going to get it because I didn't have enough income. But the good news is God was in the plane. Yeah, yeah. And I got the place that I was trying to get. And I was the only thing I was thinking about, well, how close I came to being out of I said, I'll never complain again. Well, well, well. I don't care where I stay or how raggedy it is, as long as you got a roof over your head. Yes, sir. You got something to be thankful for. Amen. We need to be thankful because God is good. Yes, he is. 1 Chronicles 16 and 34 tells us this. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures for him. The word mercy in the original language means his loyal, steadfast, enduring love. Yeah. In other words, he ain't like us. He don't just love us when he likes us or when he's pleased with us. He loves us even when he can't stand us. Uh, what you talking about? He loves us when he can't stand. Us. If you if you read the story of Moses and what was happening at Mount Sinai when they were down there making. Uh, had made a, a golden calf and, and they were they were worshiping an idol and God said to Moses said Moses I'm going to get rid of them uh -huh. I'm going to kill them Moses said no Lord pray Lord have mercy on them Lord please have mercy on them they, they, they don't know no better Moses said, and this is something we miss sometimes. Moses, God said to Moses, Moses, I tell you what, Moses, I'm going to be with you. Uh -huh. But I ain't going to be with them. Yeah, yeah. Come on, preacher. I'm going to send my protective angel to go with them. Uh -huh. But I won't be there. Uh -huh. I'll only be with you. Yeah, yeah. Even though he was upset with them, he still made a way for them. Yeah, he yeah. still was willing to provide for them. Yes. Therefore, the, the writer could say, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Uh -huh. He was good when he mad at Yes, sir. We get mad at folks and won't speak to them. Say, oh, watch out. Say it now. We get mad at folks and won't even him knocking on the door and act like we ain't at home. Yeah, we do. Go to the phone and block them on the phone. But here it says, it lets us know that God is good all the time. No matter what's going on with you, he's good. He's still good. I, 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 I wouldn't have been winning at that. Even in the midst of my mess, God was still good to me. Yeah, yeah. Still good. Still helping me. Still helping me to be the best I could be. Even though I was arguing with him. Ah, Lord, why you do me like that? Lord, why you let me go through all of this? Lord, why am I treated so bad? I'm like old me. Why am I treated so bad? I'm all alone as I sing my song. Come on, preacher. 
I'm treated so bad. The Lord had to remind me, I have never left you. Well, Nor have I forsaken you. Well, well, well. I've always been there for you. Yeah, yeah. I got you out of that. Uh-huh. I'm going to get you out of this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We forget that if he brought you through one thing, uh -huh. he can bring you bring through you another. Yeah. Come on, man. We need to understand not only that he's good, but that his love lasts forever. Yes, sir. He don't fall in and out of love. Uh-huh. We fall in and out of love. Well. The old blues song said, I fooled around and fell in love. Well, well, well. But well. God didn't fool around and fall in love with uh, you. Come on, he loved you from the foundation of the world. Well. God loves you forever. Well, well, well. Psalm 106 tells us, that we are to praise the Lord. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. He loves us forever. You won't have mercy on somebody that you don't love, but you will have mercy on those that you love and care for. Mm. The problem is you need to confess your faults. Yes, sir. Come on, preacher. You need to tell the Lord I did wrong. Uh, now, Lord, I know I did wrong, but I still need your help. Yes, sir. I, I know I didn't do what I was supposed to do, and I didn't, I didn't worship you like I should have, but I still need your help. Well, well, well. Lord, I realize that I did ugly in your sight, but I, I still need your mercy and your love to be with me. Our problem is we think, well, we don't have to confess our sin. Yeah, yeah. If we don't confess it, that it means we didn't do nothing wrong. Come on, I got news for you. You ought, to, you ought to confess a sin even when you don't think you done done wrong. <laughs> well, I know I sin sometimes, and I don't even be aware that I sin. Say it again, preacher. I know that. Amen. Sometimes my thoughts just ain't right. You know, Jesus messed a whole lot of folk up when Jesus, and they were talking about adultery and all of that stuff, and Jesus said, uh, I got news for you. If you look and you lust in your mouth, you have sin. And you think, huh? But I didn't do it. Yeah, you did. You just thought about it. No, no, not really. I, I, you know, I, I, you still, you thought about it. If you had not thought about it, you would have, <laughs> you would even been looking with lust well, well, in well. your heart. Say it again, preacher. But you thought about it. Well, I, I no, man, I get, my thoughts what get me in trouble most of the time. Okay. It ain't the actual act, it's my thought. Mine get it in the wrong place. Well, Rather how your mind get in the wrong place the same way your mind get in the wrong place. Oh, y'all be looking sometimes and y'all be thinking to yourself, you be looking, and I use these terms, you be looking, and you be saying, hmm, what a fine hunk of chocolate that is. Oh, well, <laughs> Now you might not say that. <laughs> but you thought about it. Come on, preacher. Remind me of the old joke that they told in the country about uh, folks were shouting at church one Sunday and the ladies just came up and the preacher said, uh, whosoever look shall go blind. And the deacon said, I'll close one eye and take a chance. Thoughts. Our thoughts get us in trouble. You need to confess your fault. That's why Jesus told his disciples, every time we pray, say, forgive us our debts. Uh-huh. And we forgive our debts. Yes, sir. You need to be thankful because God is amazing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not only is it amazing, but his grace is amazing. Yeah. Ephesians 6, verse, Ephesians 1, verse 6 and 7 said, To 
the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, well. in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. His grace. Come on, preacher. He forgives us or has mercy on us, and grace is that unmerited gift that you receive. You receive redemption. And you didn't pay a price for it. No, sir. Come on. How much would you have paid to be redeemed? How much would he have had to redeem you of? Well, I don't know about you, but I did so much stuff. You too? I used to wonder something, Lord, I know I need to come back to church, but I messed up so bad. I don't know if, I, if I'm holding my head up and getting in that room. And the word I kept hearing was, come on. Uh huh. Then I finally realized when I did go back, I realized what the songwriter was talking about when he said, I came to Jesus just as I would. Say it again, preacher. Weary, moon, and sad. Come on. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. How much? Would you have to pay mm. for your redemption? Well, well, well. He redeemed you when you didn't have enough to pay for yourself. Right. Here I sit alone, broken, disgusted, mm. because I realize I need Jesus in my life. Well, and yet I don't have a dime. Uh, How on. much do I owe him? Well, how much do I owe him? It's amazing that after all I did, and I did it against him, he still loved me. Love you. Yes, sir. Through his death, Jesus paid the price for us. Jesus bought us from our slavery. Whether you realize it or not, you were enslaved to sin at one time. God's grace has forgiven us. Well, he has granted us uh, forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Uh -huh. One time you would have had to shed blood. Yes, sir. But Jesus paid it all. Yeah. You don't have to shed no blood no more for Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. He paid it all. That's why grace said, so amazing. Uh -huh. I, while I was still a sinner, Yes, sir. Christ died for me. Well, Psalms 107 and 8 says that uh, all that men would praise the Lord for his goodness mm -hmm. and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Well, some of us need to recognize that we don't own ourselves, uh -huh. that we lost all that we had when Jesus paid the price. Yes, sir. Now all that we have belongs to God. Yes, sir. Now, you need to understand when the Bible says the earth is the Lord uh, and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein, that that includes you and me. Yes, we are children of the Most High God. Yeah. And because we are his children, we need to be grateful that he had mercy on us. Yeah. And he allowed his grace to enter into the plan. Yeah. He had grace on us and gave and did us a favor. Yeah. He said that even though you don't deserve it, I'm going to give you another chance. Yeah. I'm going to send my son down on earth. Yeah. I'm going to let him pay the debt for you and me. Yeah. And then I want you to understand something here today. You need to be thankful because God has answered your prayers. Yeah. Even uh, when you didn't have enough sense to recognize who was answering your prayers. Yeah. It was not because of your intellect. It was not because that you had 
have planned so well, it was not because that you had laid out a financial plan. But it was all because of the grace of God. When you prayed, you thought you were talking directly to God. But I got news for you. There's a thing called, there's a person called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was listening to your prayer. And while the words were coming out of your mouth, the Holy Spirit changed your words around so that they would be acceptable in the ear of God. When you said, I don't have the right word to say, the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about the word. Just say something. Let a sound come out of your mouth and I'll fix it up for you. That's why Big Mama Nell could get so much done and you could understand why. They walk around just going, mm -hmm. and the Lord knew what they were talking about. God. The Holy Spirit heard their groan and said they want you to have mercy on them and forgive them of their sins. But you see, once you are forgiven of your sin, you don't have to worry about nothing. Your prayer will go through. Jesus done paid it all out on a hill called Calvary. He done paid it for you when he went out there on that cross. Because you remember what he said when he first got there. He said, Father, forgive them, but they know not what they're doing. Then he looked up heaven way, and because of what we had done, he had to look up and say, Father, why has thou forsaken me? You don't put all these sins on me, but I bound it anyhow, even though they don't deserve it.
Yeah. 